John. The book of Numbers. You know, and I, I, I went that once again, time and time again. Lord, what is it? What is it you'd have me to, ta to, to talk to your people about? And when the Lord got ready. Now, see, I, I, I had a time. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this message. We got time two weeks ago and I'm going to work it out. But the Lord had his time for this, y'all. He gave it to me when he got ready and it wasn't very long ago. It wasn't very long ago. But Numbers chapter 11, y'all. Book of Numbers. The book of Numbers chapter 11. And we'll just start at verse 1. Start at verse 1 and I'm going to read till he stop me. Amen. When you get that, say amen. amen. And it reads, and when the people complained, it displeased the Lord and the Lord heard it and his anger was kindled and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of that place Taborah, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. And for said, and the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, who should give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish, which we did eat in Egypt freely. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. The manna was as coriander seed and the color thereof as the color of bedelia. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in meals or beat it under mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight uh -huh. that thou led the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Moses getting jazz in. <laughs> have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them uh -uh. that thou should have said unto me, carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father beareth the sucking child uh -huh. unto the land which thou swearest unto their father. Uh -huh. When should I have flesh? to give unto all this people. For they weep unto me, saying, give us flesh that we may eat. Now, Heavenly Father, bless your word today, Father. Lord, we come to you seeking a word, Lord, a message from you in this very hour, Father. Lord, I ask that you decrease me, Father. I yield my members to you, Lord. You speak through me this morning, Father, to tell your people what it is. You have them here, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Oh, Father, we need you today. Lord, we need you always. Father, so speak to us and show us, Father, how to follow, how to worship, how to serve you today, Lord. Father, just forgive us of our sins, Lord. Lord, we repent of those things that, 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 that are not pleasing in thy sight, Lord. Lord, cleanse us in the precious blood of your darling son, Jesus. And we'll be so mindful to give you the praise, Lord. All the glory for us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Now, help, help me, Lord. We going to try and dissect this, y'all, and, and, and see what it is that the Lord is trying to tell us today. A uh, 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 title for this message, I was thinking about, are we complainers? Are we complainers? But the Lord said, no, you tell him, I said, stop whining. Stop whining. You not the first to do it and you won't be the last. Okay, in that verse one, it said, when the people complain, 
it displeased the Lord. So right off the bat, the Lord is telling us he don't like complaining. He don't like complaining. Don't you know when we complain, we question the goodness of God. We question the faithfulness of God. When we complain, that, that's exactly what we're saying. God, are you really who you say you are? Can you really do what you say you'll do? And then the Bible says it displeased the Lord right, yeah. and the Lord heard it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So when you by yourself and think it's just you and you the only one hearing this. Uh, yeah. Throwing yourself a pity party. Right. The Lord heard it. Yeah, right. Just like he heard these people back in this day. He hear you today. He hear you today. And the Bible saying his anger was kindled. Hmm. There's a lot of people I, I, I can honestly not have said it most of my life, but in wrong situations and right. I don't care about you being mad. You need to care if the Lord mad at you. You need to care. If the Lord is displeased with you and his anger is kindled with you, 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 you better care. You better care. And the fire of the Lord burn among them. Y'all know the fire of the Lord. It, 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 we can't even imagine it. Our minds can't famine this type of fire. You know, a fire that burns the bush and the bush is not consumed. That kind of fire. The Bible says he's a consuming fire. Uh, the Lord can get in the midst of us and burn what he wants to. Everything don't have to burn up now. He can burn what he wants to. And it said his wrath was kindled because the people were complaining. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It said it consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Mm. Right. Nobody is safe. Nobody, right. Right. Nobody right. is safe. Yeah. If you're in the Lord's camp, you need to be obeying the Lord. Yeah. Period. Whether you're in the front of the room yeah. or the back of the room, yeah. it don't make any difference. Yeah. The Bible says that it consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. So nobody was saved, y'all. Nobody was saved. Amen. So then the people cried to Moses. Uh, now, Moses was God's representative, true enough. Yeah. That's right. But why wasn't they crying to God? Yes. Yes. Why wasn't they crying to God? But the Bible said when, when Moses prayed, when Moses prayed unto the Lord, yes, the fire was quenched. Uh, that tells me something about Moses' heart right there. Right. Right. Uh, right. Moses' heart was right with God. Right. Yeah. God, God heard yeah. Moses. Yeah. Now, the thing about that, and the people knew it. Yeah. Why else would they cry to Moses? Right. If they didn't think, you, and all of us have had people to ask us to pray for them, right. pray for me. Right. You know, it's because they believe you can get a prayer through. They have confidence you can get a prayer through. That's, that's what the, we are the Lord's representatives, y'all. On the earth. Here on the earth. I'm talking about the church now. The body of Christ. We are. He said when Moses prayed, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of that place Tabor, you know, because the fire of uh, the Lord burned among them. But now verse 4. And the mixed multitude. Okay. The mixed multitude. Don't y'all know we have a mixed multitude today? Today? Right now? In other words, everybody there ain't there for the right reason. The multitude is mixed, y'all. But don't you worry about that. Because <laughs> the Lord said let them grow together. Yo, don't, don't worry about it being mixed. And they fell a lusting. And that's the sadness of this, y'all. A lot of times that mixed multitude will lead some of the people with the right intentions. They may just be young and they in their spirituality or whatever it is, but but that mixed multitude will lead them in the wrong direction, away from the Lord. Because the Bible said they fell a lusting. Hmm. They fell a lusting, y'all. And the children of Israel also, they joined in with them. They also wept. They wept and said, who shall give? God owned everything, right? And we believe that. Everything is God. And he's already promised us he'll give us everything we need. But we still have the nerve to ask him who will. Who will give us flesh to eat? See, that, that, that's not a need. That's not a need. 
Apparently it wasn't if they didn't have it. It's not a need. But you ask who will give it to you? Who gave you everything else? Who brought you out of Egypt? Who been leading you through this wilderness all this time? And now you, you, because you done got in your feelings, and a lot of us do that same thing. Right. We hear that old song, and it take us back to them days to where we, and that foot go to padding, and all this good stuff here go on, and we go into asking questions like, well, when I was back then, thinking about how much better it was, we done deceived ourselves that quick. That quick. We have deceived ourselves that, like it was better back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on that deception has come in that quick, y'all. Yes, yes, Verse 5. Oh, my goodness. I remember. We remember. The Let's look at Philippians, y'all. Flip over to Philippians. <laughs> Flip over to, 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 to Philippians. I remember. I remember. Y'all remember them words now. I remember when. It, you don't, that don't always pop in your mind by itself. Somebody will come and remind you when you used to at time. You know, the, the devil had workers as well, y'all. Look at Philippians uh, 3. 3. three. And remember that. I remember. Let's look at 13 then. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. In reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press forward toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But they talking about I remember. I remember. I remember the fish which we did eat freely in Egypt. Did nothing in Egypt come free? Not one thing in Egypt. For the Israelites came free. Nothing. But now you remember. And, and, and remember too now, it was a mixed multitude as well. It was a mixed multitude as well now. It said, which we did eat in Egypt freely. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. Y'all know one thing that all those have in common? None of them have no, nothing of substance. Not a one of them has any substance to it. No protein, no nutrition, none of it. These are condiments. These are condiments. It may have made the food taste a little better in their mind, but it had no substance. It was nothing that would sustain them. Nothing. Nothing in there. Nothing that they name, but that's what they're remembering. That's what they're remembering now. Said, but now our soul is dried away. Listen now. Listen. Dried away. There's nothing at all besides this manner. Oh Lord, don't y'all know that manner was Christ? I, I, I know, I know, I know. You saying now, what, well, boy? If I had been there, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have been in that group. That I would have straightened them out. But what we do today? I can't go to that church. They ain't got no choir. Mm. Huh? Huh? So the man ain't good enough for you no more, right? All they do is talk about uh, your sins and your shortcomings. That's all they. Do. So the man ain't good enough, right? The manna ain't you need more than the manna. That's what you're saying, right? Huh? You want you some condiments. You want some ketchup on your hot dog. Although you five minutes from falling over dead of starvation, the hot dog ain't good enough. You got to have some ketchup. You don't want it unless you got some ketchup. Huh? Lord, I, the Lord said stop whining. Stop whining, y'all. And then, then the Holy Spirit comes right back and show us, y'all, about this manna thing. He said the manna was as coriander seed and the color thereof as the color of bedelia. And the people went about and gathered it. Now, the Lord going to show you what all you can do with it. The people went about and gathered it. You could grind it. You can grind it in meal or you can beat it into a mortar. They baked it in pan. They made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. It was good, y'all. Manna was good. And it was everything they needed. It sustained them. 
it sustained them, y'all. The Bible said it was fresh oil. It was the refilling, y'all. It was that Holy Ghost again and again and again. It was the refilling, but it wasn't enough for the people. God said, quit whining, y'all. Stop the whining. They displeased God with all this wine. And they said, we have nothing but this manna. Can y'all imagine us saying, hey, man, we ain't got nothing in this Christianity thing but Jesus. Hey, we ain't got nothing but Jesus. That's all we got over here is Jesus. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? The, the, the one that changes lives, the ones that save that sustain. Yes, he don't just save you, he save you and keep you. Right. He's all we need, but we say that's not enough. Amen. We say that and we see it going on in the churches everywhere, y'all. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Right. Right. We got one of the big bishops in our country today that say, if you don't find what you're looking for in my church, they got one that'll fit you. That's right. That's right. You can go find the one that'll fit you. you hmm. If, 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 if it's your, you don't want to give up your sexuality, we got a church for that. If you don't, yeah, a big bishop that's leading many. He's saying, y'all know what he's saying. Christ ain't enough. That's right. That's right. The gospel ain't enough. That's what he's saying. I understand you. You need something to fit where you at. So you can, you can find that in the church. Not in the body of Christ, y'all. Not in the body of Christ. You gonna conform to the image of him. Period. If you gonna be a part of this body, you gonna conform to his image. Period. It don't work any other way, people. Don't let anybody deceive you. It don't work any way, any other way. And we can tell that, y'all, if we'll just look at, see, because being a part of this body, being a member of this church, is a 24-7 commitment. You can look at the Bible studies around this country and how small they are. The Bible study now, I ain't talking about the church services and the, and the worship and all this stuff here. That's good. You might get the crowd for that. But what about when we just serving mountain? What about when we just serving the mountain? Hmm? Just the mountain. Huh? No cucumbers, no leeks, no garlic, no ketchup. Just the manner. When we no praise dancing, none of that. Just the manner. The word of God. The life saving, life changing word of God. Is that enough for you? Mm. Is it enough? Now we have brothers and sisters, so called, everywhere that's whining about these very things, y'all. About these very things. Yes, yes, Lord. We got to do better. Yes. You know, us here personally in this congregation, God gave us a little time to reflect. Yes, yes. I thank him for it, y'all. I thank him for it. He gave us a little time to reflect. As much as I missed y'all, and I, I would would have been here by, by God's grace either way. But at the same time, I know God don't do anything for nothing. He don't do anything for nothing. So if we searching, if we truly searching, he'll show you why he do what he do. Huh? And get you back on that. He may have been trying to tell us, stop whining. Stop whining. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. And we should all be refreshed and ready to do that now. All right, now, in, in, in verse 8, it said the people went about and gathered it, and they ground it in meals. Oh boy, yeah. They beat it into a mortar. How much stuff can you do with this manner? Yeah, How much stuff can you But it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. And then look at 9. It said when the dew yeah. fell upon the camp in the night, the manner fell upon it too. Yeah. While the people were complaining, God was still faithful. Yeah. He was still faithful in his blessing. Just like the dew fell, the manna came. Y'all know us. Y'all know how we do it. Soon as y'all went to crying, I, look, turn that manna switch off over there. Let, 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 let's see what they miss now. You know who that, but, but, but God, his ways are not our ways. God's faithfulness was in line. And he still, in verse 9, he was still faithful even while the people were murmuring. While they were murmuring, he was faithful in his provision. Amen. 
So that, that's the God we serve, y'all. Uh, he don't deserve to be accused because, you know, when you whine, that's making accusations. You're accusing God of some things. That, yeah, that's what you're doing when you whine. I said, Moses heard the people weeping in 10. Well, look, and this is so sad to me when I read it, God just showed this, this jumped off the pages. It said, then Moses heard the people weep throughout their family. Every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly and should have been. And Moses also was displeased. Said every man, the man is the representative of his family. Of his family. And it said every, the Bible, I just happen to believe the Bible. Y'all. I said every man, it mean every man. Every man, and he was crying, weeping in the door of his tent. Hmm. Terrible example. When he could have been using that time to pray. That's wasted time, and then you making accusations against God. It said every man. It, it, it took me to that passage when God said he searched for a man and couldn't find one. Couldn't find Y'all know it wasn't just no 10 or 15 people out there. There were millions of people out there. Millions of people. And every man standing at the door, in other words, representing his household, accusing God of being unfaithful. Of being unfaithful. Yes, yes. Now angered the Lord, mm-hmm. and it should have. Sure. It said, and it said, the Bible said greatly. Great, great, His anger was kindled greatly. Great, great. And Moses also was displeased. Oh, oh, look at Moses. That God man ain't it. Y'all wait a minute. Hold out a minute. Hold out a minute now. And he was, he was God man. Y'all know that. Oh, said, hey, Moses said, Have I conceived this people? Watch, Have I begotten them? That thou should have said to me, carry him in thy bosom as a nursing father bears the sucking child unto the land thou swears unto their father. Sound to me like Moses whining. Moses the one to whining. And Moses was a human just like me and you now. So, so it's not like we putting him up on no pedestal where, where this is above him. But Moses went to whining too. Now, we going somewhere with this, so y'all hang in with me. It said Moses, Moses went to wine, and he had God have he conceived his people. He had to get his pity party in, and, 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 and God, God's so patient. He just sit back and listen to him. Long-suffering God. He just sit back and listen to Moses. He said, when should I have flesh to give unto this people? Moses, we know you ain't got nothing. You, you, you own anything. It's all yours. For they weep unto me, saying, give us flesh that we may eat. Give us flesh that we may eat. Don't y'all know if it ain't the Lord's will, I don't care what you got. It's not going to do anything for you. It's not going to do a thing in the world for you. Okay, now, let, let's look over. Just look over at, at verse 31 in that. Y'all saw the question. It said, what that Moses asked. It said, when should I have flesh to give all his people? All right. And then 31, Numbers 11, 31. It said, and there went forth the wind from the Lord and brought quail from the sea and let them fall by the camp as it were a day's journey on this side and as it were a day's journey on the other side. So God covered everybody then. It said, round about the camp and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. Y'all, a cubit is a foot and a half. That's three, that's, that's three feet, y'all. Quail stacked up on quail. Y'all know I'm a hunter. I'm a, I'm a country boy. You go quail hunting, you be lucky to see two quail in a whole day. You be lucky to see two or three quail in a day. Now, if you get a flock come in, you might see five or six here or there. But to see quail three foot deep, be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you ask for. See, 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 God heard their petition. They cried. He heard they cry, and he answered it. But it didn't benefit them none, y'all. It didn't benefit them. Now, they got what they asked for. Y'all, y'all saw that. They got what they asked for. They got three feet of it, as a matter of fact. Quail. All right. Now, let's go back to 14. Moses said he ain't able to bow all these people alone. Because it's too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, Lord, I pray thee. Out of hand. If I found favor in thy sight, let me not see my wretchedness. And we understand Moses. Moses was sick and tired of these folk. 
He was sick and tired of these folk. The Lord called Moses to go get these folk. So Moses feels he got all the right in the world to go to the Lord and complain about these folk. I'm on your mission, God. And these folk here are really getting on my nerves. That's pretty much what, what was happening with Moses. These folk getting on my nerves. But, but, but now watch this, y'all. In 16, it said, the Lord said unto Moses, gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with you. With thee, Moses. And that all look good. Here go the Lord finna help Moses out, finna answer his prayer, y'all. That look good, right? Okay, that's a good thing God doing, getting Moses some help. But y'all remember, the gathering of that 70 men, okay. that's the same Sanhedrin that killed Christ. They ordered to kill Christ. That's the, same, that's the Sanhedrin right there, y'all. That Moses started that. Right there. Them the same ones, years later, down the road, Crucify him. The Lord. The Lord. See, we'll just do what the Lord say instead of keep trying to get a Lord ideas about how to do it. Don't worry about how you're going to do it. See, we, we got that same thing way back when they asked, when Moses asked them, well, I'm going to get flesh to get these folk. You worry about the wrong thing, Moses. Let your, be, let your petition be made known yeah. unto God. Stay on, stay on. And, and, and get back and wait on him to do it. Uh, that's what you do. Let God do God's work. You can't do it no way. You can't do it anyway. You know, Moses got joined in. The, he, he joined into the pity party with him. You know, he, <laughs> he knew it displeased God. Yeah. Moses had a personal relationship. The only man in the Bible that God met like face to face like that and spoke with him. So it wasn't no doubt in Moses' mind where he was getting his marching orders from. But, but, but Moses himself, he threw himself a first class pity party. We saw that. He went to the Lord by needing help. The Lord gave it to him. And that same help he gave him then was the one that that voted, conspired yes. to kill Christ. Right. To kill Christ. Mm -hmm. But look at that verse 20. Y'all, we, if we think sometime that the Lord don't give us what we want uh -huh. to on. show us yes, what we miss. Oh, boy. What we miss by not accepting what he had provided for oh, us. Okay. You know, okay, we remember the manna wasn't good enough. They wanted, they wanted some ketchup and some onions and some leeks and all that to go with it. The manna wasn't good enough. But if the Lord grants your request sometime, don't think it's always his best for you. It's not always his best for you. Just don't miss the lesson. And 20, it said, but even a whole, it, well, let's let back up. Let's back up to, to 18. It says, say thou unto the people, sanctify yourselves against the morrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For you have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, who should give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. You know the Lord, man. He repeated, he, he let reminding them of what they said to him. It was well for, with us in Egypt. Therefore, the Lord will give you flesh, and you shall eat. And 19 said, ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five, neither 10 nor 20, but even a whole month. Until it come out your nostrils. <laughs> wow. Wow. And this is the thing. And it be loathsome. The very thing you think you need. The very thing you looking at as being your blessing. Huh? The Bible said it shall be. And the Lord, this is the Lord. was still warning them. Before he ever gave them the quail. He telling them what's going to happen. That's what ha that happened before in the Bible when they were hollering, give us a king like other folk. The same thing happened. God said, and it be loathsome unto you because you have displeased the Lord. And we'll worry about pleasing the Lord more than we do ourselves, y'all. We'll avoid some of this headache and heartache that we catch it. It's got to be about pleasing God. It's got to be. If it's not, you might get you some of this loathsome here. Said, because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you. 
and have wept before him, saying, why can't we forth out of you? They back the bondage, y'all. Back the bondage. Well, are you missing anything from the world right now? No, no. I'm talking about anything now. If we'll just be honest, are we missing anything that we left out there in that world? Hmm. And if you are, you need to pray about that thing. You need to pray about that thing. Now, let the Lord take that from you. It's no good to you. It's no good to you. He said, they don't even, now they talking, they don't even know why they came out of Egypt. They've been in bunny 400 years down there, y'all. And they don't know why the Lord even brought them out. Now, why they were down there, Lord, take us out. Get us out of this. Lord, get us out of this. But when he get them out, see, if the Lord don't do just what you want, how you want, when you want, huh, you, you, got, you, you having to talk with yourself about giving up on the Lord. Hmm. It, it don't work like that. It's got to be done his way. And Moses said, the people among, just 21, the people among whom I am, a 600,000 footmen. Mm. And thou hast said, I give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. Whole month. See, he's still questioning God. Yeah. He's still questioning God. Footman. God done told him, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give, I, I, I provide the flesh. That's right. That's right. And Moses still questioning. This God's man now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This God's man. Yes, God's message to us today is quit complaining. Yes, sir. Stop your whining. Stop your whining. Right. We, we can get so caught up sometime, y'all, so self-absorbed self and not even realize that we can even deceive ourselves as if we doing it for the Lord. We doing this for the Lord. I don't have time for my family because I'm too busy doing something for the Lord. That don't go together, y'all, not at all. You better get the Lord's order right. He ordained family before he called me to do anything. So if I don't, God put it first. God put it first. But I can't, I don't. We got to get this right, y'all. We got to get this right. I don't care where you are in your life, what you have or what you don't have. If God gave it to you, it's enough. If it come from God, it's enough, y'all. Period. So while we got people in, ooh, most, a uh, lot of our black women are striving out there, y'all. Oh they are striving, yes, trying to obtain. And what they don't realize, they tearing their bodies down. Yes, they sinking their health. Yes, they sacrificing their families. Yes, their children running them up. Lord, because you won't surrender to the order that God has established. Yes, it ain't that man that said you got to get behind him. Yeah, he may have said it. He may have, but it's not his order. It's not his order. And then you got a safety net. You have to follow him as he follows Christ. You have a safety net. He has something to keep him in line much better than you ever could. Much better. Much better. So let's stop complaining about the order of God. Let's stop complaining about it. Let's learn our roles in that order. We have roles in that order. And men, if you doing what's right, if you following the Lord in the way that you should, sometimes that take firmness and it don't look very loving. That's the time when you can be the most loving, when it, when it don't look very loving. Huh? You're called to protect, to be the priest, huh? to be the head. It's your responsibility. Whether you do it or not, you're going to answer for it. You're going to answer for it. You're called to do that. And if you do that, if we're talking about God's people, y'all, we're talking about God's people. On, I ain't saying it might it'll happen right this minute or as soon as you do it's going but God gonna line that thing up to where following you or you leading that family won't be grievous to you it won't be as a matter of fact it'll be a joy it'll be a joy because you God will let you see fruit from your obedience 
in that family. In that family. But first, we got to stop complaining. Quit crying. Quit whining about, about stuff that has no substance. Has no substance. It don't matter one way or the other. Like color. Like color, y'all. That don't make no difference. It's way deeper than that. Much deeper than that. We talking about soul. What color is a soul? All right. Hey, <laughs> what color? Is a, if you can put a color on a soul. All right. Thank you. All souls are mine. All of them. Huh. It's not my wish that any of them should perish. So, uh, but all come to the knowledge of repentance of the Lord. That's where we are with this, y'all. The murmuring and the complaining and the backbite. See, we got a lot to fight against. Number one, we got to realize there's a mixed multitude. We got to realize that. And and, as soon as you realize it, accept the fact that ain't nothing you can do about it. Ain't nothing you can do about it. But you just make your stand as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, and, and try and conform, conform to that image. Uh, you might win some of that mixed multitude. Uh, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not genealogy. It's not any of that, y'all. y'all God, God went through painstaking measures. I'm sure it wasn't nothing for him, but to show us that none of that matter. Look at Ruth. Uh, look at Ruth. Brought her through and then put her in the direct line of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Rahab. Look at Rahab. Huh. These things, God made too much effort to show us that those things don't matter. That's the condiment. That's the condiment of Christianity, y'all. That's what it is. Color and all those are condiments of, of Christianity. Even your economics. So don't let that God want to bless you message shake you. Don't let it shake your faith. God do want to bless you, but he want to bless you first with salvation. Spiritual blessing. That's that's his first. And not let me mention this, his greatest blessing. That's the greatest. That's the greatest. Anything else, if you can touch it, if it has a time attached to it, it's dispensable, y'all. Yes, sir. It's, the, it's not important. It's of zero importance. If it falls on the time, it's of zero importance. That's right. Zero. We dealing with this thing called eternity. Yes, sir. And we should live for it right now. Right now. Right now. Uh, Amen. You ain't gonna have nothing to complain about when we get there. No, no. Why are you practicing complaining now? Amen. That's what you're doing. You practice. You, you dry run complaining right now. For heaven. You ain't gonna like it there. You can't complain. You can't complain. You wouldn't like it there. Let's get it out of us now, y'all. Where, wherever the Lord has placed us, whatever He has given us, it's enough. It is enough. Huh? Accept that. Accept you have what the Lord has given you. And accept that that's enough and not just that worshiping for it. You can't complain and worship at the same time. You can't do it. You cannot do it. Worship is a, is, is a state of being for the believer. We always in a posture of worship. So you can't when, when you go to complain and you having a, 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 a break in your worship. It's a break in your worship. And that's putting it mildly. That's putting it mildly, y'all. And the enemy want to catch you in that very state. He already accusing you and now he got you accusing God. That's a whole lot of accusing going on. That's a lot of accusing going on, y'all. We don't serve the God of unfaithfulness. Our God is faithful, y'all. Our God is faithful. He's proven himself faithful. Uh, he saved old low down dog like me. He's got to be faithful. He said he said he go to the uttermost. Well, that's where I was. That was my address. I I, li- I lived in the uttermost, far away from God as I can get. And he came and got me. You tell me that ain't faithful? 
That's not faithful. Amen. What? How big a fool would I be to let somebody convince me? Glory. I don't care what you, you, it ain't enough words in the English or no other language for you to convince me that this God ain't faithful. Mm. See, because you're trying to talk and convince me. He to move my heart and show me. He has showed me. Your talk will not outdo that. You it can't be outdone. So God says, stop whining, family. Men, if you whining, you leading your family in whining. The Bible said every man stood at the door of his tent. Every man stood at the door of his tent crying to God by the onion. Can you help believe how, how light by the onion? Huh? That's a mess, y'all. But, but we better be careful because we'll get in that same place Maybe not consciously, maybe not intending to do so, but we'll find ourselves complaining about something that's so minute. And the God, the Lord been putting on my heart too. We 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 ain't gonna continue to give uh COVID, Omicron, all that stuff, all this attention. We gonna make it known, and we gonna protect ourselves. We gonna talk, to, check on our family members, our, our church members. We can do all that, but it's too much. We need to know about God to be wasting this time talking about a virus. Talking about a virus, wasting time, y'all. We may not look at it like that. Like I said, it may be a thing where we we feel will help, and I never tell you not to try and help anyone. But let's not waste too much time with it. We know that it's been out there long enough. It ain't nobody in the world don't know about this thing. So, so we know about it. And there's nothing wrong with talking about it and being safe as we can be. We're going to do that. But let's not kill no bunch of time. Time that we could be telling somebody how much they need. Jesus is on his way back. Jesus is on his way back. Sooner than we think. Hmm. And if, if, if that answer is no, they're not ready, tell them how they can get ready. All right. See, it's time for us to be about our father's business, y'all. About our father's business. Out here on these streets. That's what the enemy wants. He wants you to distance from people. So you can't talk to them and tell them about the goodness of God. And what God can do in their lives, through their lives. See, that's what he wants. If we're going to volunteer to stay away from folk, he ain't got much work to do with us. We can't do it. We can't do it. Y'all, we must. We must carry out this mandate. Go ye therefore. That's our mandate. And if we're going to stand with God, that's the first part of that mandate. Go ye therefore. And tell folk I came to save. Tell folk I died so they didn't have to. That's what we do. That's what he left us here to do. So if we gonna waste time complaining and crying and being fearful, we can say we're not. But just like the woman told Peter, man, your speech gave you away. It betrays you. It betrays you. I'm talking about your walk. What you're doing, what you're not doing, what you're not doing, all that plays into it. Family, y'all know I love each and every one of you. And God, this was my sit down thing. Boy, you ain't gonna just, when you, when you be about it, you ain't gotta talk about it. Stop talking about it and be about it. I don't want to hear about what you ain't got, what you don't have, what you need. You just do what I say. None of that. None of that. None of that. It's of zero importance. We dealing, and we at end times, y'all. It's so sad that we done got this far in the game to get knocked off track, to get derailed, to get, no, Lord, keep our eyes set like a flint on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the biggest thing right now. Amen. The pastor podcast, that title. I tell him, if you just read the title, you, you, you've been prayed to. You've been prayed to. Your questions have been answered. 
Whatever your question is, Jesus is the answer. Is the answer. If you if you can't figure out how or you sitting there asking yourself, what is that preacher talking about? Open your Bible. Open your Bible. It'll tell you. It'll go to God with your question. Go to God with your question. Uh, and be honest. Be honest with yourself. Uh, and you can't do that if you're not saved. That's first. That's first. If you hadn't yet totally surrender, not just your heart, your life, your body, your being, your reason, your why. If, if why you exist is not to serve this God, to serve, truly serving with your everything, with all you got. <laughs> it's your reasonable service, people. Peter says it's a reasonable service. That's the least we can do. And if each and every one of us ain't wishing we could do more. What God, if did he do for you what he did for me? Did he do for you what he did for me? I'll never be able to do enough, y'all. I will never be able to do enough. It, it ain't about paying back. I, I, ain't, I ain't a big enough fool to think I can pay him back. I can't pay him back. But it's the least I can do. The least I can do. To be honest. And to be honest, the old people used to tell us all the time, boy, you might be the only Bible somebody read. Well, back before I was saved, I prayed that nobody read me. I pray they didn't read me. The worst thing in the world can happen to them, they read. Especially if they plan on patterning something behind. I don't want my children to be like I was. Right. Period. Right. Period. Amen. But when you know better, you do better. That's right. We need to stop whining, family. We need to focus on the things that are really important. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ, y'all. It ain't hard. It's, good. it's Jesus. Amen. It's Jesus. It's just Jesus. Amen. That's it. Let's focus on that. And in whatever kind of way we can spread that message. I'm talking about the message is just Jesus. So many have compromised. Well, it's Jesus and Buddha and Muhammad. And I, so many have done that. No, the message is, is just Jesus. The only way. The only way we get out this thing alive, y'all. Hmm. Ain't nothing but death follow without Jesus. The only way we get out this thing alive is Jesus. It's Jesus. So we need to spread that message wide and far. As wide and far. Use the avenues that, that God has set up for us to do just that. And the minute it starts getting about you, or look what I said, or look what they said about me, Fall flat on you. Don't even break your fall with your arm. Just fall flat on your face. Amen. Don't stick your arm out to break it. Just fall flat on your face. And ask God to forgive you, get you right, and keep you moving. Because that's what we are, family. We got to get about our business with this thing. Quit the crying. Quit the whining. And let's serve the Lord like he says, sir. Thank y'all for listening. And if it's anybody, y'all, if it's anybody who don't know if you don't know this Lord, this Christ that we're talking about here today, and the free pardon of your sin, make right now your time. His word said today is the day of salvation. Make right now your time. It'll be a time you'll never forget. Uh, just like you remember your birthday, you remember this above your birthday. You Because it's more important than your birthday. You were born in sin. You were born dead. You can be raised to life right now. Just accept this, this, this Christ we're talking about. And he'll open up all this stuff that you don't know what this preacher talking about up here. He'll make that clear to you. He'll make all that clear to you. But if you have a make today your day, accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you all for listening. And we're going to buy a hit. Well, we got to pray about this thing. Lord, we ask you, Lord. To seal your word to our hearts, Lord. Lord, to keep us in a way that only you can, Lord. Lord, forgive us of our complaining. 
Forgive us of, of our questioning you, Lord. Forgive us of not deeming you faithful. Yes, Father, we, we just love you today, Lord. And we ask you to help us, Lord, in all that we do. And we'll be so mindful to give you the praise, all the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.